and clan members, we're here to talk about episode 56 of Pokemon Horizons and okay, I'm trying to follow the pattern from the previous episode review. I saw the discourse online about this episode, okay, and about the Liko crying scene. We're going to get to that later in the, in the review, but I just want to say, a fucking duck trio? <laughs> Rika, what the? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I didn't expect the fucking duck trio to be the, the, the partner Pokemon to Claude Sire, which is my boy. I fucking love Claude Sire. Okay, this is one of my favorite Pokemon from Gen 9. I think I've mentioned that in the previous episode of you. But I'm just like, of all the Pokemon, you got fucking duck trio as your partner. I, that's, that's fucking sad. I, I don't know if I wanted to see a, a, a Gen 1 Pokemon in this fucking battle, but whatever, whatever. Um, but listen, I actually really, listen, 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 listen. I actually really, really like this episode. Okay, and it, it, it also, it feels a little weird and a little off for me because I was also like, like in the beginning half, like I was like, bro, what the fuck is Katie doing? Cause like this bitch didn't lift a single finger until Florinato was again about to get bodied by a poison jab and then it got hit once and all of a sudden it's in swarm and I'm like, the fuck, how weak is this fucking bitch? Like, <laughs> like I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I. I just felt a little off because she only she only did one thing before that moment and I was like to block like a fucking rock slide or some shit like that. I'm trying to recall. There was there was definitely something I uh, maybe arm thrust, I don't fucking know. She did something, right? And I was like, everything else is literally just throwing out the getting fucking thrown all shit all over her. Like like that the, the, the Claude Sire and the trio were just strictly attacking Florigato and I think it's because Rika knows. Like if she knocks out the student, she wins, right? So like the whole time I'm just like, Katie, what the fuck? Like do something for fuck's sake. You just stand there and then she does that and then she goes like super sick. Like listen, I was, uh, they almost had me in the first half, okay? I literally thought that, that Liko was on her own. Like this is supposed to be a tag battle. And like the big, <laughs> like the bitch isn't doing shit. But like when, when low kicks, or low ticks, whatever the fuck the name of the thing is, I think it's low ticks. Um, when it went in, as soon as it had swarm, I was like, bro, this man gives no fucks. Like he was going in, like, like lunge, like, uh, what, what the fuck, struggle bug, use a fucking bounce, like just do, like just zooming all over the fucking field. And I was like, bro, that's it. That, that, <laughs> listen. Katie, like I said, I said this in the previous review. I don't really care too much about the gym leaders in in Scarlet and Violet. Okay, they they were pretty pathetic for the most part. I don't really care for for any of them. Uh, well, that's a lie. I I, I had my favorites. I don't know, um, Braces and and Kofu are like my but the only ones I really cared about in terms of the story. And I don't know it's only because she's been prominent everywhere and Braces because he's so distinct. Okay, Kofu just for the gym test. Okay, but like I'm really liking the fact that the anime. Is giving life to these characters. Okay, one of the problems I've had in the past, in the, in the past show, obviously, um, with the gym leaders is that usually in the games they're relatively interesting for the most part, and then the anime does some things with them to like either improve them or make them worse. In this case, I do think the anime really elevates the gym leaders of Scarlet and Violet because in the actual main game. They're all pretty fucking boring, except for, I can't say for sure if there's anyone that's actually interesting in-game. Um, except for maybe Iona, and that's just because of the, the characters they gave her. And like I said, the only reason why I like Kofu is because of the way they handle his gym test and the way he's a goofball, right? But for the most part, I don't think that they had enough time to really shine in the games. So seeing them here and them being propped up like that, I would have never thought. I never would have been like, you know, Katie, you know, the bug gym leader is out here like a freaking savage. Like, I'm, I'm going to murder you all, okay? You are, you're over here talking shit about bug types. I'm going to show you what a bug type can do, okay? Like, I love the characterization they're, they're giving her in the show. So it, it just it just got me hyped, okay? I got to admit, I was a little excited. I was like, whoa. This bitch is going in, like, Rika was like, damn, I can't do shit, right? <laughs> like, she was getting, low kicks just, just went in. I, I was, I was, it, it was, it was amazing, okay? It was amazing, and then, I, and then low kicks just dies. Because he's like, I succumbed to my injuries. I'm like, 
like, the way he shut down was so funny. And then, like, the funny thing is, and as soon as she does that, Doug Trio's out of commission because he's fucking paralyzed now. Which makes no sense because, like, just because you're paralyzed doesn't mean you can't move. It's just, it just makes it harder to move. And I'm just, and he's just like, Lico, now it's your time to, sh- to shine and shit like that. And like, listen, the only the only weird thing about like the Lico stuff, and I I am, I want to I want to get into the Discord stuff, right? The the everything everybody was talking about online on Twitter and shit like that, and and the fucking crying scene. Okay, now the 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 weird thing for me personally speaking, when it comes to Lico as a character, is that I've mentioned this a lot in every other past episode that involves Lico and her battling skills, is that she's the she is the clean slate. She is the the the, the vanilla. Like, I have no idea what battling is ever, right? She she is literally the newbie trainer, okay? I, I have said that, that Roy, and Liko, and Doc are technically all newbies because they're just starting out. However, when you look at them in a vacuum, Roy, you already know, is a hyper-aggressive trainer, right? So his is like, you know, fueling to the gas. Like, just go, 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 right? I, I've been saying this a lot. And then Doc is a very slow, methodical, analytical battler. So, when you think of it from that perspective, Liko really doesn't have a way to battle. She's just like learning from everything that's going on and trying to develop her own battling skills um, and her own battle style. And this episode kind of like highlights that. And But like the one thing I don't understand, and I do give to the people that were kind of a little, little iffy with this whole like scenario that happened, is that there's no reason for Liko to be as self-concerned as she was before the battle kicked off, right? Because at this point, she's still just starting. There's no real, like, expectations of her yet. Like, she's still learning, right? So why she was nervous kind of felt a little off. And then, like, her questioning and doubting everything. And, like, like I, her, her being teased by Rika was adorable, okay? Rika, now, Rika, I know a lot of people really enjoy her. And, and there's, like, fan art of her everywhere. And, like, she's, like, like the peak fucking character in Scarlet and Violet for a lot of people. I, I like the way that she's handled as her own character because she's she is the embodiment of like, I'm here to help you grow. I'm your teacher, right? Even though she's not even a fucking teacher because she's like an Elite Four member that does like this weird like questionnaire before you even get to battle the Elite Four and then she becomes like the first one you face. But she's always has that, <laughs> she's always had that air of like, I'm just trying, like I, I, I follow my own path. I do this shit. I'm I'm the one, okay? And I'm going to make sure you get to my level, okay? But I'm still going to whoop you if I need to, right? That's the, the vibe I've always gotten for Rika. And that's what I was getting from her. Like, but she's she's still, like, I, I don't know if overconfident is the correct word or, or what. But, like, <laughs> she was, like, really messing with Rika, which was, it was funny, okay? It was, <laughs> it was very funny. That, that she was like pushing Liko that just to get her to relax because like Liko was super tense for no fucking reason That's for the crying at the end There's two things here that and there's two viewpoints from see I'm seeing from a lot of people There's people saying that this is off-brand for Liko as a character because she hasn't really shown This like drive to be a battler before right? She doesn't have this like big motivation to just do Pokemon battles So her losing here when she's lost plenty of times before kind of makes that doesn't make sense but then there's the other side of it is like She's finally understanding the real root of what a Pokemon battle is supposed to be, right? So this is like her like awakening moment, right? That's the that's the vibe I'm getting. That's the, the, the thing I'm seeing from the two sides. And I, honestly, I'm kind of like in the middle of it. I think that her losing here after how many other losses she's had in the series, it feels a little jarring for her to start crying now. But I do think this is a good turning point for her as a character. This is in stark contrast to Serena, Okay, back when she had her first loss and she fucking cried and she did that whole fucking emotional thing. I think that was a badly done scene because this is the first time she's ever doing anything, right? And she had this like ego of like, oh, I'm just going to take over everything. I'm going to win because I I hate Serena as a character. People know that's for a fact. All right, if you've been, if you've noticed anything on my channel, if you know anything about me as a person, I think she's one of like the worst characters ever in the existence of the Pokemon franchise. Um, the anime Okay, Brandon. I don't mind like game Serena or, or manga Serena. I don't know too much about manga Serena, but in terms of the anime, Serena is like one of the worst, if not the worst character in the history of the show. So when it happened then, it felt unearned because at that point, it's not the the way she lost was stupid, and second, 
I don't know why the fuck she, you're doing this whole, the, the, the fucking anime trope of like cutting your hair and turning into a new leaf. When you should have done that when you confronted your mom. But that's, again, this is this video and this review is not about Serena. I just wanted to bring it up that in this scenario, it does kind of work because now Liko is like learning the true value of Pokemon battling, which is going to help her grow in the future, right? So this is like a true changing point for her because at this point she doesn't really have like her own like style of how she's gonna supposed to handle a book model she's still too new and like she's also very i'm trying to think if the word is not it's not ignorant um it's it's basically the word for somebody who is too new at things and doesn't really know too much about how the world works but i, I don't want to call her ignorant because she's not ignorant she's just new Right, and, and it still is my mind, but you can let me know in the comments and call me an idiot for not knowing the words. But listen, Katie is like trying to explain to her how she's supposed to view the, 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 the battlefield and, and how everything's going. She literally starts looking around the battlefield like, uh, and then Rika's like, you're taking everything literally, aren't you? You're not supposed to do that. So like that, that's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. I feel like this is her turning point into what it's going to eventually lead to her building her battle style and the way she handles Pokemon battles and actually starts really enjoying and participating. And that was like, it wasn't like a big crying scene either. She just, she shed a couple tears after she returned Flory got to the Pokeball and then like, like Katie like hugged her and she's like, we all did great. Like we all did really good. She's, she's feeling motivated. Um, so like I said, I, I, I kind of understand both sides of the argument, but I think they're missing the nuance of what they're trying to establish Liko's character as. They're just trying to like put her into a box. I don't really think that's how the writers are, are really trying to make these characters in the new series. Like, they, I, I honestly think that people need to leave the, the concessions of how the writers used to do, like, everything Ash and all their fucking companions. Like, everything from the old series, they need to take that and, like, remove it from their the equation because they're not really writing these characters the same as they used to back then. These are completely brand new characters, and, and the way they're writing them is completely new and different. So... I think that's probably where the problem lies is that people are trying to put them in boxes like like we used to be able to do with like the old cast because the old cast realistically speaking they all fit into like generic boxes these characters are very complex and nuanced you can't really put them the same and you can't really think of them the same um that's just my stance okay honestly if this was old source on and with the old mindset that i used to have i probably would have felt the same way as those people are saying this is completely stupid and why the fuck is she crying Right? I probably would have been in that camp, but as I've grown older and aged up and like I understand the things that the characters are going through and the way they're writing these characters, it, it makes sense. I still don't think the way they handled Serena's crying scene was properly executed because I felt like I still think that was too late for them to do the transition. Right? And now as me like looking at the plot, like I still don't think the scene was badly done, right? And it wasn't badly written. I still I still stand by the fact that it didn't feel like it was earned at that point, right? Which is different from this one because yes, we haven't seen her like have this like constant like growth of like the battles are, are her losses are taking a toll on her, but that wasn't the point of her crying. She wasn't crying because she lost. She's crying because she's finally understanding what Pokemon battling is and what it's going to mean for her, right? So that's the thing, like, I, 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 that's, I think what people are missing. But I think I've rambled on long enough uh, for this review. The only, like, final thing I can say is that I'm glad that we see Penny. Like, the, the Dot and Penny connection is there. Um, and, like, Penny is suspicious of Agate. Which, if any character was going to be suspicious of this fucking, like, crazy-ass bitch that just joined, it would be Penny. So I'm glad that they're doing it and there's, like, a friendship now with Penny and Dot. Because they're both, like, technological geniuses, obviously. So I'm hoping that that also leads to something down the line. Um... And I hope that when Arvin ends up showing up, because I'm pretty sure they're going to have to show all three, um, that he could be, like, the one for Liko. Because the way I'm seeing it right now and the way they're handling it is that if Dot is the one that, that is now in connection with Penny, and Nimona has always been, like, like Roy's level, right? They've always been, like, on par with each other. Then, honestly, the last one would have to go to Liko, right? So just to... Do the, the pairing properly. But I think that's going to be it for this review. Hope you guys enjoy. Thank you guys, seriously, so much for watching. Um, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. What you guys thought about the episode. Um, what you guys thought about the review. If there are any improvements you guys want me to make. But that's it. Edit this video down. Upload it for you guys. And move on with my day. So, so I have been your host, Rose Croxton. 
and I will see you guys in future videos, streams, shorts, and everything in between.